Ирина Кирсанова, Жизел with Алла Шелест. People have become so indifferent these days. The greatest among us pass away and are quickly forgotten. I wish we could learn to remember them. Will we remember them? Will our children remember? Will we ever learn to appreciate people? When Nikita Dolgushin and I began our work on Giselle, I was forbidden to travel abroad. In the Soviet times, I was considered a troublemaker. I didn't attend Komsomol meetings. I used to walk barefoot on the grass in Mihailovsky Park. People would ask me the question with irritation in their voice. Why do you think you can do something that others don't? Dolgushin must have liked that. I was not like others. I tried to explain that I did not go to the meetings because I didn't feel well after them. My friends and classmates would say, why is that? We attend the meetings. And I'd reply, well, you might as well stop going altogether. Dolgushin and I worked on my part in Giselle while our troop was away on a foreign tour. I was even allowed to dance that part. Yet on the same day as the opening night of the performance, we received an invitation to the anniversary of a famous writer, Chingiz Aitamatov, in Almaty, where we were supposed to perform Leonid Lebedev's Mankurt, a ballet staged after the bird named Donenbai, a novel by Aitamatov. I was the only one who danced a certain part in that ballet. So I had to choose whether to dance in Giselle on the first night at the Mali Opera Theater or to go with Lebedev, my favorite choreographer. The choice was made and I paid for it with my leading part in Giselle. After that, Dolgushin didn't forgive me for a long time. I returned to the part of Giselle many years later. I did not want to fly into the ballet. I wanted to do everything right. I began my search for someone who could pass the part to me. A friend of mine told me, do you know that Ala Shelist just stays home doing nothing? Ala Shelist was a legendary performer of Giselle's part who had discovered a completely new way of performing the part. All our dancers of that time mostly copied the French ballerina Lilian Dade and her way of bending arms and capricious poses, while the Russian classical tradition of performing that part was gradually forgotten. Then, Ala Shelist appeared on the stage of the Kirov Theater and brought a revolution. She danced the premiere one year before her retirement. So I went to Ala Shelist and I told her my story and said that I would like to prepare for that part the proper way. She seemed to move with great difficulty and her eyes couldn't see too well. Well, we might as well try, she said. Only I do not venture out, so I will be teaching you here, in this very room. And this is how her lessons began. Shellist would sit in her armchair and talk to me quietly. Then she began to get up and would open her eyes wide. They turned out to be so blue that I could see her young and innocently naive soul behind their widely opened eyes. Ala Shelist would appear different in those moments, and that was the most mystical. Then she not only began to get off her armchair, but began showing me the moves. Then we began to come to the theater for about four-hour rehearsals. It was a miracle. At that time, I died as a dancer and was recreated with the help of Shelist and made into a new one. I told myself I would do everything she told me, whatever she wanted. Shellist worked with me as if I were a student in ballet school. She would correct my posture, show me how to set my feet. She had her own method of teaching. I was like clay in her hands, which she would shape as she pleased. Yet I pulled through. She decided to do the part of Giselle in the best traditions of the old Marinsky theater. These were lines, as one can see, in the portrait of Anna Pavlova by Valentin Serov, with arms outstretched and beautifully formed hands. So simple and so natural. This was a Giselle as if her portrait were painted by a Russian artist, Nestirov. We worked very hard and it was thorough technical work. 
I do not know if anyone else works like that today. Shelley Stephen deprived me of the little tricks which gave so much comfort while dancing. You must dance properly, not comfortably. The movements must go through a plié. I could be proud of myself. After all, I did everything Shellist wanted me to do. One gesture of her half-opened arms told me everything about the part. That was the secret of Giselle. The first night was a very special occasion. It was like another birthday for Alla Shellist. She was sitting in a box in the spotlight. The troupe asked to announce that the brilliant Alla Shellist was present in the audience. After the performance, I was told I was dancing Giselle as though I had been doing it all my life. I managed to dance the part one year before the end of my dancing career, just like Alla Shellist. By then, I had already won her trust. I understood I was a ballerina with my own individuality. We seemed to understand each other without words. I knew what she wanted to say by just looking into her eyes. Why, that was a little too vulgar, she would tell me with her eyes, and I knew exactly what I was doing wrong. I had a feeling that through Giselle, Shellist was passing on to me some secret knowledge. She taught me all she knew about the dance techniques, movements, forms, positions of the arms, the back, and of course the style. The style of supreme simplicity. That was also the style of Ulanova. You dance, but you do not feel the moves. They seem to disappear, vanish from sight. The art of ballet begins when technique and movement disappear. Shellis was like an empress to me. She came from a noble family. She held herself like a queen. Such things must be genetic. They're hard to hide and reveal themselves constantly. She would speak to you in such a soft voice and smile so charmingly. She had such a smile, so gentle and lovely. I remember Shellist's instruction. On the day of opening night, do not go anywhere, even to class. You must gather your emotions, save them. I remember when I danced La Bayadera, I went to the stage with a groan, with a groan. Shellist did otherwise. She was saving her energy of spirit. Shellist was a wise woman. She told me she had left the stage early, in time, the way it was supposed to be. Do not leave early, she told me. Dance as much as you can. She must have regretted that she had obeyed the rules and left the Kirov theater after 20 years of service. There was a certain air of mystery about her and so much femininity that it is possibly why the audience loved her. Shellis must have opened her true self upon the stage, her feminine beauty. Giselle was followed by the Sleeping Beauty, Pas de Deux of the Bluebird and Princess Florine, the Nutcracker, Le Corsair, all of which were also prepared with Yuri Petuchov and Alla Shellist. She watched my performances with keen interest. I remember how she would tell us about the duet of the Bluebird and the Princess Florine, from Marius Petipas, The Sleeping Beauty. She told me to listen with my ears and not just put my hands on them. Do you hear the love song? Do you hear it? She taught me to move my arms gently, as if they were disappearing. She taught us the mechanics of the duet, how two loving souls talk to one another. 
I recall how we went to Japan to dance the duet of the Bluebird and Princess Florine. It was after the rehearsals with Aula Shellist. The local ballet lovers asked us to dance the Pas de Deux at their concert. They understood the underlying message that Aula Shellist had put into the dance. They saw it was a duet of lovers, where the characters did not move but spoke to each other about love. It was so beautiful. People like Ala Shelis comprise our nation's cultural treasury. If we want to preserve our traditions, then we must put on record their every word and memorize them by heart. Although I fear that the traditions are now being forgotten with no one to reinvigorate them.